Hi, I'm Taylor Pink here at Fat Quarter Shop Studios. And in this video, we're building on the last two videos. The first one talked about concept and storytelling in creating a fabric line. The second one talked about drawing and doing the digital renderings of the fabric, really developing the fabric, turning those concepts into life. In this video, I wanna talk about the actual producing of the fabric, which is a whole different beast. And it's where we really get into sort of more of the engineering side of what I do. The creative is essentially done, but I also really love this part. So come join me. We'll t I'll show you how you actually produce a fabric collection. So the first thing I need to do is communicate to the mill, which is in a different country, goes through a middleman, which is my production guy at Free Spirit, who is the greatest person on earth. Hi, Alberto. Um, so he's my number one production dude at Free Spirit, and he handles all of my fabrics um, and talks to the mills and get them, gets the fabrics to turn out the way I want them. So there's a couple of things we have to manage in this situation. One is my printer will never, ever print out the color I actually need it to be. So... I print out the designs as I've designed them, but I have to put together a package that communicates the actual color I want each thing to be. So I have to communicate the colors to the mill in a way that they understand them. And the best way to do that is to give them actual swatches to match to. So the way I do that is I send out these sheets that have actual Pantone chips on them. And I don't always use Pantone colors. It's a brand of color matching chips that you can buy. Sometimes I use paint swatches from the Home Depot. Sometimes I have to cut a swatch off the shirt my mom is wearing that day if it's the right color. So people wear a lot of black in my studio um, so that I don't attack them for their clothing swatches. But um, so what I usually do is I put together something like this. So this is for this print in my true colors and each print is two colors and so what i've done is taken each print and here's the colorway the the skew number so they know which one i'm talking about the color name of that print and then i put the two swatches of the colors that are going to appear in that print so i have the skew name what the print number is in this case it's pwtp148 and these are the each of the 12 individual colors of each print which i have printed out here just for reference for the mill but this is what they're actually matching to so the mill is going to match to each of these color swatches and that's what's going to create the colors in the fabrics because my fabrics are screen printed i can actually call out very specific ink colors that they can custom mix to create exactly the color I want. And so when I get those fabrics back, I actually don't go back and look at the swatches. Um, many people do, but I don't make sure that they're exactly matched to what I sent. I look at just what's in front of me and say, do I wanna buy that fabric? Is this the best possible version of this color? Because things change when, they, when you get the actual swatches back from the mill. So what I typically get back is something that looks like this. So it has my fabric on it and it's marked on here the color number and you can see across the top here that I also have the color numbers. So this sort of medium teal is color number two, this one's color number three, color number four. So if I want to say to them, you know, this green is a little too yellow. I go to the green swatch up here and say change color number five to either a new swatch or I can say make it two steps bluer or I can say make it 10% darker. So there's a lot of ways that I can communicate how I want them to change that color. But what I'm trying to do is give them the most easily comprehensible instructions that I possibly can because again I'm dealing with people in a different country through a middleman although Alberto is the greatest that has to communicate all of these differences in order to get the perfect piece of fabric 
So a couple of things I'm looking at when I get my swatch like this. So this is actually a swatch from my 108 inch wide backing fabric. And even though that fabric, the repeat on it is 36 inches wide by 108 inches tall, this is all I get to look at. So they can't actually print a whole bolt of fabric for me in order to just look at for color. So they end up printing just a small portion of it, a representation of the fabric that I have to look at and say, is the color good? Is it sitting right? Um, they mark for me where the selvage is going to be so I know which direction it's facing to make sure that's been done properly or the way I want it. Um, and so I look at all of this and there's little tiny things that I'm looking for in here. Of course, color number one. Is the color right? Is it sitting on the fabric right? Is anything jumping out? Is something too gray? Is something too bright? Even though there's no such thing as too bright. But I'll ask myself the question just in case. And so another thing that I'm looking for here is print quality. So I'm looking at, is this color sitting next to this color creating any issues? And what we call that, so it's kind of hard to see in here unless you're right up on it, but where this blue, this sort of aqua color is meeting this really yellowy green color, when those two colors overlap, it's creating a small section of green where the yellow and the blue meet is creating a small little green line. That's what we call trapping. It's where two colors overlap and create a third color. So I have to look at that and say, cause there's a certain amount of that I can't get rid of. The only way to change it is to make one color darker so it covers it, make one color lighter so it doesn't affect the other color so much. So these are all the little decisions that I'm gonna make once my swatches come in. And there's a little bit that I have to consider here. So most of these swatches that I'm looking at were actually pulled or screen printed by hand. They weren't printed on a machine. So I know there's a small percentage of that that's gonna be fixed when it's actually produced properly on a machine, um, on a large screen printing machine where the actual machine is making an even, uh, run of ink across the screen. So this is done by hand. So there are portions of it that maybe the pressure was a little off because it's human error, right? So there's a little bit of that that I have to consider and know that some of that will get incrementally better. So there's a lot of guessing <laughs> in this. In all reality, we do quite a bit of guessing that some things will improve. There are oftentimes something that are just not fixable and then i have to go to a totally different i either have to completely change a color um, which actually has happened many times uh, twice in recent history once on a line i did called tabby road where i got the colors back and it was awful my fault i had i don't know if i was sad that day or what but that line came in so drab and pale and washed out that I had to recolor and re-strike off, this is what we call a strike off, re-strike off the entire collection, which is not something I want to happen because it introduces a whole bunch of variables, takes a whole bunch of time, and you know, every day that we're set back in production can be an extra week in what it takes to deliver the fabric. So we have to be really smart about how we tell people and communicate what we want this fabric to look like so that we don't have to go back and change things. Um, it's very rare that I go to a second round of strike offs. I might on one or two pieces, but typically never more than that. Um, after designing about a thousand fabrics, I pretty much know what I'm getting into. Although it did happen on my newest collection, Homemade, was another one where the actually the pink colorway, which is called Morning, came in really gray and mauve -y. Um, Originally, that, that machine on the pink back, or the aqua background, it's sort of a pinky orange machine, on an aqua background was originally on a gray background, and it looked so dreary that I couldn't take it. And so we recolored that print, sent it off again, and it came back in pinks and aquas and oranges and was 
a million times better. So it's rare, but it does happen that we have to send something back and have it completely redone. So once all of these are approved, I send my approval. So you can see on this piece, I approved TP, that's me. Um, I sent this back with my signature that it was approved and then the production starts. So they take these samples back. Um, Free Spirit has a copy in their offices and the mill has a copy in their factory and every yard of fabric they produce has to match back to this swatch that has my signature on it so it's and if it doesn't then we can return the fabric essentially and say nope didn't turn out right that's never actually happened but i imagine that's how it would happen i don't actually know because it's never happened but they match everything after that back to this swatch with my signature on it and that's what ends up in the stores. So after all of the strike offs are approved and all the fabrics done, um, I've sent in at this point while all this production is happening. Um, so I've approved everything, it's all been sent in. Now it's gonna take about 12 weeks to actually print the first run of the fabric. So this is before anyone's seen it. This is the fabric that I get like four or five months in advance in order to make all my samples and my quilts and show you how it's going to look that's all of this yardage that ends up on the color cards that goes out to the stores so they can see what they're buying hopefully hopefully they're buying it um and so once all, while all that's happening that's when i sit down and i write out in a way that people can read it the story of the fabric collection that's when you know, I'm designing, the selvages have already been designed. So I design the selvages. I determine what shape the dot on the selvage is, if I want it to be a different shape or if I want it to be a circle. Sometimes I like it just traditional dots on a selvage. Sometimes I like it to be a little shape of some kind. Um, it just depends. But this is when I start designing the quilts and working with other pattern designers to say, hey, I've got this fabric line coming. Um, I want to see what you do with it and I send out digital images and then they send me pictures of quilts that they've designed. We start determining what's the best way to show the fabric line. Um, this is when I start, I actually send a list of the order the fabric will be in in the bundles. So I don't know if everyone does this, but I do. I like to, I like to control the order that all the fat quarter bundles or design rolls or charm packs, the order the fabric's in that I think shows it off the best. Um, Cause sometimes if they're all jumbled, it doesn't really tell the story of what the full color spectrum looks like. Um, I like to determine which piece is on top of the bundle and which is on the bottom of the bundle. Because when you're in a store, when you're looking online, you can't always see inside the bundle. So. I make all those decisions while the production is happening. So when the sample yardage, my advanced yardage actually comes in for me to start making these things, I'm all ready to go. And in the meantime, I've probably also started the next fabric collection. At any given time, I'm in some stage of five different fabric collections. So I'm at one time, like currently at home, I'm drawing my fabric line that'll come out late next year. I have one fabric line that I just approved strike offs uh, three days ago. My true colors fabric collection, which is going out to stores right now. And they're the shop owners are looking at them. So Kimberly is probably looking at it saying, who is this Tula King pink character? Do I even want to buy this? Of course she does. She loves me. So she's looking at this right now, trying to determine if she's going to bring it into her store. There's homemade, which is currently being printed and getting ready to ship in March. And there's monkey wrench, which has only been in stores for a few months. So that's actually six, I think. I don't know. I wasn't counting, but various stages of fabric lines. So I am on Instagram and social media talking about the line that's in stores even though I have these four other lines backed up waiting in the wings in different stages of production, getting ready to go. So it's not like we design a fabric line, wait for it to come out and then design another one. It's a constant cycle that's always ongoing. So I'm always drawing something, 
marketing something, selling something, producing something. So all of these things are all happening simultaneously on various fabric lines. So if you ever come up to me, if you see me like at the grocery store, or Best Buy or something, and you come up to me and you say, oh, blah, 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 your new fabric line, and I stare at you blankly, it's because I'm trying to figure out who you are, what part of the industry you're a part of, and what you're talking about. Because if you're a home sewer, you're talking about the one that's in stores. If you're a shop owner, you're talking about the one that comes next that no one's seen yet. If you work at Free Spirit or the mill, you're talking about the one after the one the shops are looking at that no one's seen yet. And if you're talking about either of the last two, then I'm super freaked out because you're in my head. Because I'm the only one who knows about this. So if I stare blankly for a minute before I catch up to who I'm talking to and what we're talking about, that's why. So thank you for watching my video on the production of a fabric line. Um, I hope you watched all three because they all sort of link together. The concept and, and storytelling of a fabric line, the drawing and designing of a fabric line, and the production of a fabric line. I also have a bunch of other videos that I filmed for Fat Quarter Shop that are up here. So check out Fat Quarter Shop's YouTube channel in order to see all my videos.